Hello, my name is Roy Beiswinger, and I want to talk to you about the Sport Pilot Certification and Privileges in the FAA Mosaic Rule Proposal. The focus here is on the FAA discussion on conducting practical tests in an aircraft certificated with a simplified flight controls designation, section 61.45. In the description, you will find a link to the FAA's Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, NPRM, as well as links to other resources. Remember, I'm just letting you know what is in the NPRM. By reading the FAA's words, I'm not necessarily endorsing the FAA's text or methods. In fact, I'm wanting you to listen closely to their words because these are the rules you will have to live under. This is meant to be a class on the document. I refer you to the original document for precise language. Let's continue the discussion on sport pilot certification and privileges. So that you get the scope of everything in this section, here is the list of the individual items. Here in mosaic number 23, we'll talk about just one area, conducting practical tests in an aircraft certificated with a simplified flight controls designation. Conducting practical tests in an aircraft certificated with a simplified flight controls designation, section 61.45. Section 61.43 provides the general procedures for conducting a practical test. The completion of a practical test for a certificate or rating consists of performing the tasks specified in the areas of operation applicable to the airman certificate or rating sought. These tasks and maneuvers are contained in the ACS or the PTS as appropriate. Current production aircraft, as well as those that obtain a simplified flight control designation in the future, may not be able to accomplish all the tasks required during the conduct of a practical test. For example, these aircraft may be unable to perform an aerodynamic stall or steep turns during a practical test, which are typically tested as an area of operation in the practical test. To account for these operational limitations, current section 61.45b2 permits an applicant to use an aircraft with operating characteristics that preclude the applicant from performing all the tasks required for the practical test. However, the applicant's pilot certificate is issued with an appropriate limitation. The FAA recognizes that those aircraft having simplified flight controls may not be able to perform all of the tasks required by the ACS or PTS as applicable. Applicants would be able to use the provision of section 61.45b2 to complete the practical test in such an aircraft. However, they would receive a limitation on their certificate specific to the make and model of aircraft with simplified flight controls that they tested in. Because the current rule language in section 61.45b2 already provides for the issuance of a limitation in this instance, the FAA finds it unnecessary to propose an amendment to the provision. The FAA would, however, develop guidance to explain that in the event an applicant uses an aircraft with simplified flight controls designation that is not capable of performing all the required tasks for a practical test, the aircraft limitation would be issued pursuant to section 61.45b2. The limitation would likely be a model-specific limitation to effectively identify the aircraft the test was accomplished in and limit the pilot from operating another aircraft that may be able to perform tasks and maneuvers that the pilot was not trained or tested on. Further, because simplified flight control characteristics may vary among aircraft due to rapid advances in aircraft automation and flight control technology, the FAA believes that additional safeguards are necessary for those practical tests taken in aircraft with simplified flight controls. Specifically, the FAA proposes new paragraph G, which would set forth the requirements for an applicant taking a practical test for an initial pilot certificate, rating, or privilege in an aircraft with a simplified flight control designation. First, the examiner would have to agree to conduct the test in proposed section 61.45 G1. Additionally, the FAA proposes in section 61.45 G2 that the examiner also hold the appropriate category and class rating or privilege, the appropriate simplified flight controls training and model specific endorsement, and an FAA authorization to conduct the test. It is important that the examiner is familiar with the make and model of the simplified flight control designated aircraft before issuing a practical test to conduct the test safely and is familiar with the standards that an applicant must meet so as to demonstrate competency. 
The FAA finds that examiners must become familiar with the make and model through the training and endorsement requirements themselves before conducting a practical test in the same aircraft. Proposed Section 61.45G3 would require the examiner to have the ability to assume control of the aircraft at any time to enable the safe conduct of the test should the applicant perform poorly during the test and possibly put the aircraft in an unsafe flight condition. Applicants that successfully complete a practical test in one of these aircraft would then be issued a pilot certificate with a model-specific limitation per Section 61.45b2 and proposed Section 61.45g4. Pursuant to Section 61.45g4, the model-specific limitation would be issued subject to the requirements of proposed Section 61.45h, would explicitly limit a pilot who receives a category and class rating or privilege with a simplified flight controls limitation to operation of only that make and model of aircraft. Proposed section 61.45H would also detail the requirements under which a pilot could operate a different aircraft. First, if the pilot seeks to operate another make and model of aircraft with a simplified flight controls designation in the same category and class, then the person would be required to only receive training and an endorsement in accordance with proposed 61.31L. The person would not be required to take another practical test because the similarities between classes of aircraft are such that a training and endorsement would be sufficient to address operational differences with the simplified flight controls designs. However, should the pilot seek to operate a different category and class of aircraft with a simplified flight controls designation, the person would be required to successfully complete a practical test for that category and class of aircraft under proposed Section 61.45H2. This proposal is no different to the current status quo whereby a person holds a certificate with a category and class rating and seeks to operate an aircraft in a different category and class rating. Additionally, should a pilot who holds category and class ratings and is limited to acting as pilot in command of aircraft with simplified flight controls, that is, has taken a practical test for those category and class ratings in only an aircraft with simplified flight controls, seek to act as pilot in command of an aircraft without a simplified flight controls designation, the person would also be required to successfully complete a practical test for that category and class of aircraft with traditional flight controls under proposed 61.45H2. A practical test would be required to address the more significant operational differences between first, different categories and classes of aircraft, and second, aircraft with a simplified flight controls designation and those with traditional flight controls. For instructional purposes, the following table presents a sampling of scenarios pertaining to when a pilot is authorized or is seeking to operate an aircraft with simplified flight controls and the proposed requirements. It's difficult to actually illustrate an entire table uh, here in this format, so we're going to go through this line by line. Each line in the table goes through the following items. If you hold A, that's talking about where you are starting, and you are seeking, talking about the rating you want, then you must complete what you have to do and then the regulatory reference from the new rule. If you hold a sport pilot certificate with rotorcraft helicopter simplified flight controls privilege with model specific limitation and you are seeking to operate another model of rotorcraft helicopter with simplified flight controls, then you must complete the training and endorsement required by proposed section 61.31L. The regulatory reference for that is the proposed section 61.45H1. If you hold a sport pilot certificate with rotorcraft helicopter simplified flight controls privilege with model specific limitation and you are seeking a private pilot certificate with rotorcraft helicopter rating regardless of a simplified flight controls designation, then you must complete the requirements to receive a private pilot certificate to include a practical test. The regulatory reference is Part 61, Subpart E, subject to proposed Section 61.9. If you hold a private pilot certificate with a rotorcraft category and helicopter class rating, simplified flight controls model specific limitation, and you are seeking to operate another model of rotorcraft helicopter with simplified flight controls, then you must complete 
the training and endorsement required by proposed section 61.31L. The regulatory reference is the proposed 61.45H1. If you hold a private pilot certificate with a rotorcraft category and helicopter class rating, simplified flight controls limitation, and you are seeking to operate a rotorcraft helicopter without simplified flight controls, then you must complete a practical test. The regulatory reference is proposed section 61.45H2. If you hold a private pilot certificate with a rotorcraft category and helicopter class rating, simplified flight controls limitation, and you are seeking to operate an airplane with simplified flight controls, then you must complete the requirements to add another category and class rating on a private pilot certificate to include a practical test. The regulatory reference is proposed section 61.46.2 and part 61 subpart E. If you hold a private pilot certificate with a rotorcraft category and helicopter class rating, no simplified flight controls model limitation, and you are seeking to operate a rotorcraft helicopter with simplified flight controls, then you must complete the training and endorsement required by proposed section 61.31L. The regulatory reference is that very same proposed section 61.31L. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of this video. Here are a couple things I believe are worth mentioning about this. This section is almost like someone wrote a skit about the FA. It's kind of a bad joke. Industry is working on simplified aircraft controls. It takes creativity, technical savvy, and more to come up with technology that works simply. Then, in response, the FAA comes out with a complicated set of Rube Goldberg style regulations to somehow make simplified controls safe for the pilot community. It's somewhat crazy. If someone can pilot a helicopter with conventional controls, it isn't going to take time with the CFI to figure out simplified controls. It just may take a YouTube video. After all, the very idea of simplified controls is to make them intuitive. FAA really needs to rework this section. They could go a couple of ways on this. One way would be to make an aircraft with simplified controls rating. Maybe that is a rating a step down below a sport pilot rating. Then, if you have an advanced rating for flying the same category of aircraft with conventional controls, flying an aircraft with simplified controls would not be a transition requiring a CFI. This isn't a revolutionary thought. Flying something different from what you were licensed on doesn't necessarily require a trip to a CFI. For example, if you learn to fly a high-wing airplane, there isn't a regulatory requirement to work with a CFI to fly a low-wing airplane. However, a transition from an aircraft with simplified controls to an aircraft with conventional controls would take some more work and probably a checkride. FAA, it's time to think this one through. Like I said in Mosaic 22, if you learn to drive a car with a manual transmission, learning to drive an automatic doesn't require a visit to a driving instructor. A similar concept applies when transitioning from conventional pilot controls to simplified pilot controls. And that is it for Mosaic number 23. Please comment and like the video if you got value from it. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe so you can get more of the good stuff. Thanks so much for watching and blue skies.